I took my hand as well. That might be gonna be a lot of like a little bit. I'm the same, mate. Listen, I'll, I'll be I'll be stopping you for when I. <laughs> mental strength and resilience. Can it be taught? Are you born with a strong set of mental skills? No, it's definitely taught. It's definitely developed. It's developed through schools, through parenting, and that's why it's so important from a young age to make sure that that's developed in the right way. And you're born with a brain. It's how you stimulate it. It's how you use it, and it's how uh, you develop it from a young age. It's obviously your parents' responsibility to do that. But as you get older, you're always going to pick up mental skills all the way to the day you die. When people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm mentally robust, I'm mentally strong, I'm there, you've sort of stopped in life then. Now it's important to make sure that you continue that process all the way up to till you pass away. So hopefully you're always going to learn, you're always going to grow, and your mindset's always going to expand. It's a, never-ending sort of evolution. What things do you put in place? Do you do it daily or weekly? Or was there a point in your life where you go, well, I've got to change and this is how I'm going to do it? I challenge myself on a daily basis. If it's easy, then it's not right. I don't overthink things. I'm not someone who's really spiritual and I sit there and I keep it nice and simple. I look at life as a challenge. I think to myself, how can I challenge myself? And ultimately, how can I take away something that I didn't know about myself on a daily basis, and even if it's something tiny, right? I might be sitting on the tube, for example, and I might see an argument go off, and I look at someone, I go, oh, I like the way that she dealt with that. And all I do is take a little bit of that and, you know, and add it to, to becoming a better version of myself. Resilience is extreme doing. It's getting out there and learning from your mistakes. And what I mean by learning from your mistakes, you know, people say, oh, I'd never make the same mistake twice. But go out and make that same mistake 10, 20, 30 times. As long as you're learning something each time, then you're becoming more and more resilient to the situation. Do, 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 do. If you believe in it, you will achieve it. Mental resilience is about failure, it's about setback, it's about knockbacks, but it's about learning from that process. Can people, as you say, lose their mental resilience? 100% you can lose your mental resilience, and that's where quitting comes in. When we mention the word mental, that is this whole area of your body, right? Um, if this fails and this quits and this stops, then the rest of you will, will follow. So you can lose your mental resilience, but that's through quitting. That's through being scared of failure, being scared to commit, whatever it may be. That fear will stop you in your tracks and it will ultimately stop your mindset. So you must keep it simulated. You must keep going. You must keep growing. Ultimately, to become a great leader comes from yourself first rather than a set of traits that one needs. Leadership is about leading your own life taking charge of who you are. You cannot lead your own life and you cannot take charge of your own life. And trust me, you can have all the leadership skills in the world, you ain't gonna be able to lead anything or anyone into any situation. You know, you can pull the wool over people's eyes, you can pretend that you do that, but guess what, after two, three years, you're gonna fall flat on your face. Leadership is about taking leadership and ownership of who you are. The moment you can do that, leadership is easy. I can remember leading groups of soldiers in, into combat, but it wasn't because I was a great leader, it was just because I knew how to take the ultimate lead, mm. which was of myself. Leadership definitely comes from being a self-led individual. You know, accountability, um, discipline, structure, teamwork. You put all of that into yourself, that just reciprocates in, into, into leadership. It's not, not hard and you will see people fall by the waist when they step into a leadership role and their life is one big cluster. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what makes a shit leader? Someone with no integrity. You need integrity to be a leader and you need to be humble. Leadership is about brutal honesty, it's about communication. Having that common denominator, that's what makes a good team, is there's a common denominator between each and every one of you because that way you become committed and dedicated to each other rather than the cause. And when you're committed and dedicated to each other, you become sort of invincible. You know, there's nothing that's gonna get into that team. Whether you fail, whether you succeed, whether you stumble, whether you trip, it doesn't matter because you know that when the chips are down, everything is against you, you can look behind you and you've got that group of individuals still there with you. That's what teamwork's about and that's what leadership is about, to form that bond within that team. And you're fast approaching the big four zero. No, mate, I'm 38. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I am, I am. I am. How has fitness changed for you? 
as you got older? Um, I went through a stage of absolutely annihilating my body. You know, every fitness uh, session, every time I was out in the field, or every every time I hit the gym, I just ruined myself. Um, I was young enough to do that. That's what I was trained to do. Like ruin myself, build myself back up. Ruin myself, build myself back up. But now I'm getting into more of the thinking more about my body mm. now. You know, wear and tear, knees, back, um, more functional stuff now. Because I see a lot of people, especially ex-military people, and they sort of hit the functional stuff in their late 40s, early 50s, and it's too late by then. So I've sort of learned from that and listening to my body. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm creaking a little bit here, creaking yeah. a little bit there, and I shouldn't really be doing that at, at 38. So I've really sort of jumped on the whole uh, functional stuff. The movement that you do in everyday life, grabbing something from the floor, picking it up, you know, jumping up and pulling yourself pull-ups or whatever it may be. Even the body weight stuff it is great stuff. So I've gone into that, that sort of transition of not really breaking myself every time, but just building myself up to when I need to go and film again or when I need mm. to go and survive again or when I've got an extreme adventure come up. I sort of leave the breaking to those moments now. But um, yeah, definitely before, it's all about breaking and building back up. But I'm just thinking about it a lot more now. What would you tell the ant middle of 15, 20 years ago in regards to the gym and training and fitness? I probably would have done a lot more stuff with flexibility. You know, I, say. I know, I know, because I am, I am tight. I tell you what, <laughs> and it's just become comes from that military background where you don't warm up. You know, you go straight into it. Obviously, it's changed now, but um, so I wish I would have just taken a bit more time out to stretch. All you're doing is you're just investing that time into you after a workout. Take that 10, 15 minutes out to stretch off. It's, it's time well invested into you, into your body. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wish I would have stretched a bit more. But hey, listen, I seem twang around and. Be crawling around, I'm sure. What exercises can you not live without? Press ups, um, just such a you know functional part of the body. Sit ups, uh, dips, just your sort of all body weight exercises. All body weight exercises. You know, it makes me laugh when you see people at the gym and they're lifting huge weights, and then you say, "Do a pull up." Yeah. Or do what you've just done there, do, and they can't even lift their own body weight up. And you're just like, well, it's all well and good, but think about the ramifications of that and associate that with everyday life. That's what I want people to understand is I don't live in the gym, I don't live on a diet, you know, I, I keep my training sustainable and relevant to my lifestyle. And that's the way that you're going to get sustainability. The moment you start going off on this fad and you start going off on these diets, and then all you're going to do throughout your whole life is this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just keep it sustainable, listen to your body and, uh, and try and fit it into your lifestyle. Make it part of your lifestyle. You know, I've got family, I've got kids, I've got work, I've got my, my gym because, you know, I've got I need to hit the gym, I need to... But I run a lot, I swim a lot, and I just mix it up. I love mixing up. One day I will get up, I'll be in the gym, and I might, might be doing some exercise and I think, oh, not breathing right, or mm. my lungs need a workout here, and I'll just drop the weights and I'll smash out a 5k run. And then at the end of it I'll go, that's what my body needed. Listening to your body. Yeah, listening to my body. And I think to myself, wow, I've just opened up my lungs. You know, that's what I can breathe better now. It's, and it, that's what I do. I'm never sort of set in how I train because obviously because of my lifestyle and my work. But I, I just listen to my body. Mm -hmm. We live in a society now where guys seem to be more obsessed with aesthetics. Of course they do. Everyone wants to look good. And don't get me wrong, we all do. You know, we all want to look good and we all want to have that beach body at a younger age. But trust me, when you get older, you know, we're talking about training at 40 here, even though I'm 38. Trust me, when you get older, I've been there, done it, got the t-shirt. When you get older, you realise you can't even run two, three kilometres and, you know, you're starting to pant when you go up the stairs or you're starting to ache at the age of, you know, your mid-30s, early 40s. That shouldn't be happening. You need to put your money where your mouth is and live a, a long, sustainable and healthy life. So ultimately, that's what you want to do. You want to live as long as, you, long as you can and be as healthy as you can for as long as you can. And you say one of your favourite exercises is the press-up. Love a press-up. Time to put your money where your mouth is because we're going to take on the Royal Marine press-up test and I'm going to ask you a series of questions whilst we're doing it. Oh, I haven't done that in a while. Ready, Ant? Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. If I fail, which I obviously will, I'm going to jump into the plank. <laughs> Listen, I'll be joining you. Let's go. Let's do it. Ease away. Stand by. Three, two, one. 
OK, selection again or climb Everest again? Um, selection. Share a sleeping bag with Ollie or Foxy? Um, <laughs> Foxy. Always be 10 minutes late or 20 minutes early? 20 minutes early. Fail at something you love or succeed at something you hate? Succeed at something I hate. <laughs> lose your hair or lose your beard? <laughs> um, uh, I'd have to go with lose my hair. Face your fears or forget that you have them? Face my fears. One nipple or two belly buttons? Um, two belly buttons. Are you from the neck up or the neck down? Um, neck up. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? <laughs> one horse-sized duck. <laughs> I'm struggling now. Let me read. 41. 42. <laughs> 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, Let's keep going, Maya. 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Stop. Stand up. Well done, buddy. <laughs> Do you know what? I haven't done that in That's years. <laughs> Quite a test.